This is Anna from Madame Sew. Today I want to show you how to make a simple sewing organizer. You know, the kind that slides under your sewing machine and then has a pocket hanging in front of you with all your essentials, with the advantage that you can fold it and roll it and using, use it also as a travel organizer that you can take with you. Now, it's going to have just a little bit of a challenge. We're going to use vinyl to make that pocket. So let's talk about vinyl a little bit. It's a tricky material. It can be very sticky against some uh, materials and very slippery against others. So for cutting, usually it helps if you tape it to your mat and then cover it with some tissue paper so that your ruler doesn't slide. And then for sewing, uh, you will often need some tissue paper, usually on the bed of your machine, and some specialty food. If you have Madame Sew's um, 32 presser foot, both the non-stick foot or the roller foot will work. Uh, if you don't have any of those, you can use some scotch tape, I like the frosted kind, um, under your regular foot, and that will help. It won't work as well as a specialty foot, but it will help so. And also, make sure you lengthen your stitch length. Usually around three millimeters is good. So, let's get to it. So originally for my quilting, I was going to just do some vertical lines, sort of following these trees or whatever they are. Um, but then I thought that the pocket is going to be in the bottom and the dividers are going to have vertical lines and I don't want that to interfere. I really want some straight lines. So I'm going to make them horizontal and, you know, I'm going to roughly measure the center uh, here and that will be my folding line. Then I'll trim it so it's in the center. So you don't need to like panic too much about this. Just roughly measure the center if you want. This is not essential. It will still fold. but. It's nice to have a folding line. And that will be my first line, and then I'll go up and down from that point. All right, so I'll show you once I'm done. All right, here it is. And we're just going to trim it using the ruler and the rotary cutter. And once we've done that, we'll just go and deal with the vinyl and you know cut it and make the pocket and all that. So my vinyl is a little crinkled it's been folded so the way I like to do this is to put my iron on a cotton setting and it would probably be a little cooler too but I find a cotton works well and I just warm up my mat and now just lay the vinyl on vinyl sorry and stretch it out and it just releases all the wrinkles pretty nicely. All right, so here's my slippery vinyl. Okay, I don't know, it's hard to see on camera. So I am going to tape it to my mat in a couple of places. That's maybe here too. Okay, and now I'm going to cover it with tissue paper and you know my tape is giving me a rough idea of where it, of where it is and I can fill it with my fingers too. Let's cut our strip and then we'll go bind it for the pocket. This is my squared of edge, so I'm going to sandwich it. Here. And I'm just going to use, you know, I'm going to run it through the um, binding foot, but I just, you know, vinyl is so slippery. I want to make sure that things are staying where they should be. I'm going to put a few clips. So here I am. I have some tissue paper on this side so that my vinyl doesn't stick to the machine. I find that vinyl to plastic seems to be pretty tricky. Okay. Okay, it seems like everything is in place. Slide the thread to the back. 
Okay. Oops, wrong place. This is why you start on the fabric so you can have room for adjustment. Let's see. Okay, here we go. So now it's time to measure for the pocket. And I'm doing this simply by you know, placing my tools where I need them. You know, I'm giving this a little bit of thought because I'm putting those, you know, that very tall one next to some not so tall. So I can put them a little closer than I would otherwise. And I'm thinking also, what tools do I want? Like I'm really, this is going to be sitting under my machine and these are the tools that I need all the time to manipulate you know, the sewing machine feed to like grab the thread, thread the sewing machine, like little things like that. So for example, I, also, I always want to have this so I can be switching between feed. And maybe I'm actually going to leave this pocket, I'm going to put a whole pocket here, larger, so I can put sewing machine feed in there too. Okay, so I like this. So now I'm just going to get my other marking pen. And I am going to just make some marks, roughly. Okay, this one I'm gonna mark right there, and this one right here, and this is gonna be my big pocket. Um, now the other thing that I wanna do is I wanted my pocket not too deep, so I left it at only three and a half inches so that I could reach this smaller things. And mark some lines. Now it's time to align this. This is where the clips come in very handy. And in fact, I think that for sewing with vinyl, they are indispensable. So I'm going to use as many as I can. I'm just going to leave a little enough room here for the foot, the sewing machine foot to go through. Okay, so I think this might be one of the tricky spots. Notice that I'm starting at that end and that's because that's going to be covered by the binding later. So, you know, it's easier to mess up when you have to back up you know, these threads can get tangled, so it's better to have that on that end. If you start here, you know, then it's gonna be more prominent. Any little mistake is gonna be very prominent. Okay, so I'm gonna back up first. All right, and now moving forward. Keeping. Okay, and now I wanna stop right before I hit the tape, just because it's a different color. So I'd rather, you know, not have the white go all the way up. I think it's gonna look cleaner. So now I'm gonna back up a little and cut the thread, okay? Also, I started in the middle of the vinyl, just, you know, I don't want things to be pushing sideways since everything is so slippery. I think it's easier if you start in the middle and then move to one side and then to the other side. Last thing I did on the machine was to secure the ends of the pocket with, you know, about an eighth of an inch, quarter of an inch. It will be covered by the binding, but it'll, it'll make binding just a little easier. It'll be already secured. So let's just now trim this off and we're ready to bind. All right, before we bind, we're going to attach or not, not attach, but place the ribbon for the, for tying it. And, you know, I've measured roughly the center once I fold my organizer. So I place my pin right here and I'm putting it on the right side because I'm left-handed and I don't want this like dangling in front of my left hand, which is what I'm going to be using when I'm at the machine to grab my tools. So keep that in mind. So I'm going to place it here and I am going to pin it away 
a little bit further from the edge so that it doesn't interfere with my with my binding foot it's a lot of layers to go through I'm using instead of ribbon I'm using a little more um, bias tape so it's a lot of layers of fabric right there but it'll be fine and I am my some of the tools I want to keep in here are a little long and I know once this is sewn they're gonna have a tendency to do that so I want to put this is elastic so I'm just gonna put a little bit I think this is a good height again I'm gonna keep my pin away from the edge right there and now I'm just gonna stretch this very slightly okay, see I don't want I think that is good I don't want it to be floppy but I don't want I don't want it to bend my organizer or fold my organizer I should say okay so this is good so I'm just gonna cut it and secure it in the same way on this end Okay, and now we're ready to bind. And one little tip here. Uh, you could leave your corners square and just, you know, make miter corners with your binding. But if you want to avoid that, you can simply slightly curve your corners. And I used, I have these little templates. And I used this small one for it, but, you know, a small glass will do it. Uh, so I'm just cutting off. And I was going to leave the pocket um square so as not to lose any room there but i think i'm just gonna cut them too it's just it's a simple thing to do and it really is not going to take so much room away from my pocket so you know just place your template if you're going to use a cup or a glass or something like that maybe you want to trace it onto a piece of cardboard and then use that as your template but you know you could possibly just use the glass All right, we're getting getting to the tricky part with all these thicknesses plus the vinyl here. So, first thing, as always, slow down. Okay. And you have a little time. Okay, see? Have your owl ready or, you know, small scissors, anything that you can use to guide all these things under into the right places. Okay, and now, so now it's into the the channel here, but the next obstacle might be getting into the, under the foot here. Okay, so just be ready to deal with that. I went in fine. And now I'm just going to do a little bit of what we call taut sewing, which I'm just holding this. I'm not pulling, but I'm just holding everything a little taut including the tape okay just to make it go a little more smoothly there we go okay I can see this needs some help and that definitely is going to need some help going under the foot unless I'm very much mistaken but so I'm gonna slow down there it is see it's not going under you see how it's already folding there so I'm just going to lift the foot Put just the very beginning under and now it shouldn't be a problem. And now again some taut sewing. Ah, it's filling it. Oops. Okay. Crisis avoided. You know, the edge of the pocket, the top of the pocket folded, but not too badly. Okay. All right, so now we're getting close to the curve. Let us proceed with caution. So, you know, it's pretty much a, st a straight line all the way. All the way, all the way here, I'm gonna say. Right here, so. I'm gonna do that just to remind me that I need to stop and slow down once I get there. Here we go. So it's still a straight line until this part gets 
under the needle, but I'm still going to slow down and just pay attention to what I'm doing. Okay, the tape is going straight and it's going to keep going straight. I'm just going to pull on it a little bit to give it a little, um, you know, a little bit of room to, to go around the curve. And what I'm really doing is guiding the fabric under the needle with the curve so that it stays in this channel. Okay, I don't know if I'm making myself clear. Basically, the tape goes straight. You just need to worry about curving the curving the fabric. And it actually is a little easier than with other fabrics because you have a pretty good grip on the on the vinyl, much better than on just the cotton fabric. So my hand is putting quite a bit of pressure. I'm pulling slightly on the tape and I am curving the fabric and I stop as needed. I can just look in here, make sure the edge under inside the channel is hitting the edge of the bias tape and just do a few more stitches. It's making me nervous because it looks like the stitches are like quite on the edge there. I'm hoping I'm catching the other side. Okay, I'm going to stop and pull my curve a little. And as I'm pulling the fabric, I'm also pulling the back side of the tape. So that's also giving it a little tension and contributing to everything going where it's supposed to go. Okay, so here we go, a few more stitches. Oh, and now it's kind of stuck, let's see. Okay, let me just see if I can... Okay, unstuck, here we go. Okay, and now we are over the curve. Just a little pinch there, but it will come off with a little steam. It's barely perceptible. Okay. Just need to make sure that the vinyl is guiding through. If you're finding that a little tricky, you can always put some tape. You can even put it inside the whole thing. A little tape, I mean a little paper. Although, you know, I'm thinking like some washi tape would also do the same, have the same effect and be very, very stable. Oh, you know, that is actually helping. I'm just going to keep doing this. Well, we're all done. The last thing is just to give it a quick press to, you know, straighten the edges, get rid of like any little wavy spots, and also to get rid of the marks of the gel pen. So I'm going to turn it to the wrong side. Okay. Oh, and trim your loose ends too. Just give it a quick press. The gel pen disappears immediately. Just, you know. At every end. <laughs> Look, it got a little, little steamy in there. And it looks really nice and it's going to be very useful. And you can also, you know, wrap it up tight and take it with you. Hopefully that was useful and you've learned a few tips about working with vinyl and you have a sewing organizer to show for your paints. As always, if you have any questions or comments, let us know. We're always happy to answer you and do follow us on Instagram, Facebook, and YouTube. See you in the next one.